بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد الحمد لله it's been a very long month a very blessed month إن شاء الله of of Ramadan I haven't seen you all تقبل الله منا ومنكم صالح الأعمال الله accept our fasting الله يتقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا وسجودنا وتلاوتنا القرآن الله accept our fasting our prayers our أذكار everything it's a long month and now looking back it feels like the month never happened back to square one, back to our routines, back to how life was. And it feels like Ramadan just disappeared in a way that it never had even started. But Allah accept whatever good we had done in that month. And obviously reflecting over that month, we know the objectives of that month, the Quran says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That fasting has been made uh, obligatory upon you as it was made obligatory upon those previous to you, those who, those who preceded you, for the objective that you develop a quality known as taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You've developed a con uh, consciousness of Allah. So we know the month has gone and we tried our utmost in this month, in this holy month, to develop this quality known as taqwa. And inshallah, we are l reflecting in our lives today that alhamdulillah, there is a sort of change in to the better. And we have improved as, 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 as humans and as Muslims, socially, spiritually, after the going of the month of Ramadan because we are people who look for continuous betterment. Right? Continuous betterment is our objective. Islam does not compare you to anyone else but yourself. So you are better than you were yesterday. Like Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhuma would say, مَا نَدِمْتُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ كَنَدْمِي عَلَى يَوْمٍ غَرَبَتْ فِيهِ شَمْسِ غَرَبَتْ فِيهِ شَمْسِ نَقَصَ فِيهِ أَجَلِي وَلَمْ يَزِدْ فِيهِ عَمَلِي He said, I never regretted anything as much in my life as I never regretted anything as much as I regretted the day in which in which the sun set, it, 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 it rose and it set, the day went by. My life was shortened on this planet and my good deeds didn't increase. So it's always objective, continuous, uh, better, meaning inshallah. Now it is truly the blessing of Allah that throughout the previous months we were able to complete Surah Yusuf and um, now Surah Al-Hujurat we are commencing with inshallah. Um, this is a surah that I chose and some brothers had, had uh, requested me if I, could, if I could speak on this surah or if we could do the tafsir of this surah next and it was a very good uh, opinion given by the brother. A couple of brothers requested this surah and it is very beneficial as there are a lot of social aspects addressed in the surah. This surah was revealed in Madinatul Munawwara and it was revealed in the later portion of the Madani life. Some scholars say it was as late as the ninth year of Hijrah. So ninth year of Hijrah, basically only a year prior to the demise of the Prophet ﷺ, this surah was revealed. So. It was revealed very late in the Madani, uh, in the Madani period. It's a short surah. It's not very lengthy. There's only 18 ayat, and there are two rukus. So in this 13-line Quran, it's only four pages. So it's a short surah. However, the lessons, just as the rest of the Quran, that are drawn in this surah are specific, are beautiful as every other verse, but they are, they are specific to our social social gatherings and dealings. So a lot of times, um, because of a cultural shock or sometimes because uh, we, are, we are not in the ideal Islamic environment, we are stripped or we become oblivious to the ideal social conduct. So this surah very beautifully, very eloquently, very profoundly elucidates and explains to us how we must live our day-to-day -day lives and how our dealings must be. So without any further ado, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ very profound statement by Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa rasooli. O you who believe, do not put before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet. Put before what? La tuqaddimu. La tuqaddimu, the maf'ool is not mentioned. The objective, or sorry, the object of that statement is not, is not mentioned. So Allah says, la tuqaddimu, do not, do not, give precedence to, do not put before Allah and His Rasul. But what? لا تقدموا أنفسكم Don't put yourselves before Allah and His Rasul. Don't put your ideologies before Allah and His Rasul. Don't put your desires, your goals, ambitions, and plans before that what Allah wants from you. So Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَهَمَنُوا لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيِ اللَّهِ O you who believe, 
Do not put yourselves before Allah and His Rasul. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu says something amazing. He said, wherever in the Quran. Now this surah, many a times, many a time Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu, ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu, ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu. O you who believe, O you who believe, O you who believe, listen carefully. La tuqaddimu bayna yidayi la, ya ayyuhal amanu, la tarfa waswatakum, ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu, in jaakum fasiqum minum. Many, ya ayyuhal ladheen, O you who believe, O you who believe. Ibn Mas'ud says that wherever the Quran says, ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu, each and every single believer, man and woman, should listen very attentively as Allah is addressing them directly. Allah is addressing them directly. Because this is the beauty of the Quran, right? Oh, the one or oh, those, ya ayyuhal ladheena aman, oh, those who believe. Sometimes it's an open statement, ya ayyuhal insan, oh, human, oh, man. Now, this is not exclusive to the believer, this is to all. Believer, disbeliever. Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. Alladhi khalaqaka, fasawwaka, fa'adalak. O human, O man, ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. What deceived you from your generous Lord, your gracious Lord? Alladhi khalaqaka, the one who created you. Fasawwaka, who fashioned you. Fa'adalak, he perfected your creation. Man, look at yourself. O man, look at yourself. Stand in front of a mirror. See how amazing the Almighty has created you. How perfect He has placed your eyes. How amazing He has made your nose. Right? Everything was put in its right place. Imagine our eyes were in the front and the nose was in the back. Or imagine the eyes and the nose were in the front, the mouth was in the back. Imagine how awkward it would look. Or one eye in the front, one eye in the back. Right? Your peripheral vision would increase. 360 vision now, mashallah. No, but it would have looked so awkward and off. So how, however Allah created you, perfected you. So what can turn you away from your Lord? So he says that whenever Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, then we all should open our ears and listen carefully as Allah is speaking to you directly. Allah is speaking to you directly. لا تقدم بين يدي الله ورسوله واتق الله إن الله سميع عليم. Do not put yourselves before Allah and His Rasul and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is the one who who hears and He knows. So, do not put yourselves before Allah. A lot of times we are conflicted with two: what I want, what my boss wants, what my family wants, what society wants, what my culture wants, and what Allah wants. A lot of times I'm conflicted over here. I'm conflicted. And I need to make a decision. Do not give precedence to anything beyond the order of Allah. Do not give precedence to anything beyond Allah. Give precedence to Allah. The one who will leave the pleasure of Allah for the pleasure of the people, Allah will make the people hate him. Allah will be displeased with him, but Allah will make the people hate him. But the one who leaves the pleasure of the people to attain the pleasure of Allah, Allah will make the people happy with him. Allah too will love him and Allah will make the people happy with him. So whenever you may be conflicted, giving precedence to the choice of Allah, giving precedence to the desire of Allah. What Allah wants, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, when he would define taqwa, he would say, and he, he, makes, he, he, he illustrates this definition in the famous sharh of uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, the Bukhari Sharif of uh, Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, Fathul Bari, you know the, uh, the ulama would say in reference to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said after the conquest of Mecca, La Fathah Ba'd al-Fathi. There is no conquest after the conquest of Mecca. So they would say about the book, La Fathah Ba'd al-Fathi. There is no book anybody can write after the, after uh, the book written by, after the commentary and the sharh written by Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahimahullah. So the Fath al-Bari is an amazing book. Fath al-Bari is an amazing, amazing shara. Right? Ibn Khuldun, the great historian, he would say that Imam Bukhari has left the Ummah indebted, in debt. By writing his Bukhari Sharif, he has left the Ummah in debt. That there is a great debt on this Ummah on behalf of Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari to be paid off because of the colossal task he took on his shoulders. And then he says, but when Ibn Hajar came along, Ibn Hajar paid back this debt on behalf of the entire Ummah because of the amazing sharh he wrote. Never, nevertheless, he says taqwa, the definition of taqwa is أَن يَأْتِيَ الْمَرْءُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ أَمَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَأَن يَجْتَنِبَ عَن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ نُهِيَ عَنْهُ 
that a man performs everything diligently, everything he has been ordered to perform by Allah. And he abstains from everything which Allah told him to abstain from. And this is the definition of taqwa. Whether I understand or Allah wants, that's what I will do. So it is a contradiction in definition if I call myself Muslim but go against the order of Allah. Islam comes from the word Aslam and Yuslimu Islam. Fahuwa Muslim. Islam has a dual meaning. Muslim is from the word Islam. It has a dual meaning. It means peace, as we know, but it also means submission. So the ultimate definition is to attain peace th through submission to Allah. وَسَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Ibrahim alayhi salam named this Ummah Muslim. Muslimin. He named this Ummah of yours, the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi he named it the Muslimin. But the people before were also called Muslimin. So from a linguistic perspective, anyone who submits to the will of Allah is called a Muslim. So how do you claim to be a Muslim, a believer, one who submits to the will of Allah, and at the same time put anything else before the desire and the want of Allah? لا تقدم أو يه بليف لا تقدم بين يدي الله ورسوله أو يه بليف do not give precedence to anything before Allah and His Rasul do not put yourselves before Allah and His Rasul do not put your ambitions your goals your job nothing when it is time to pray you shall pray إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا there is an allocated time you must pray done your job your family everything you will do diligently, but the right of Allah is before the right of the people. The right of Allah comes first. What Allah and the Prophet want from me. What taqullah and fear Allah. This is the ultimate definition of the fear of Allah. You do what Allah wants. You do what Allah wants. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. MashaAllah, the rain is coming down. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful time to be reciting the Qur'an. The Qur'an says in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah says, Alam ya'ni lilladheena amanu. أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله وما نزل من الحق ولا يكون كالذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبل فطال عليهم الأمد فقصت قلوبهم وكثير منهم فاسكون. and then what does Allah say after that? Allah brings down the rain. what's the verse? وكثير منهم فاسكون إن يعلم أن أن الله يحيي الأرض بعد موتها and know very well Allah brings life to the earth just how beautiful the parable here is ألم يأني للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله فضيل بن عياد heard the verse his life changed has the time not dawned on man ألم يأني للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله has the time not dawned on man that their hearts tremble from the remembrance of Allah. Their hearts become soft from the remembrance of Allah. They feel the proximity upon the remembrance of Allah. And has the time not Alam has the time not come yet? And whatever Allah revealed in the Quran. When you hear the Quran, Allah says that when they hear the Quran, when the people hear Wajilat Kulubuhum. وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانَا When they hear the Qur'an, their hearts tremble. They become soft. But we never understood the Qur'an how it ought to be understood. So the aptitude is there. So the brother will watch a Bollywood movie, sister will watch a Bollywood movie and start crying. Right? Why? For the fiction that's shown on the screen. Right? Watching a TV show something and oh, start crying. What, what happened? Why is something stimulated and it's fake and you're crying over that? So the aptitude of mercy is there. Compassion and empathy is there, but it's invested in the wrong place. You know it's fiction and you still cry. You know it's fiction and you still cry, but you're not crying over the things you should be crying about. Wajilat qulubum, their hearts would soften, they would tremble. Wa tuliyat alayhim ayatu zadatum imana. When the verse of the Quran be recited, they increase in iman. They feel the iman. So Allah says, has the time not come that they become soft? Right? Whatever Allah revealed, that enters the heart, penetrates the heart. Over here, penetrates the heart, softens the heart. Allah says, don't be like those people who we gave the book previously. A long time passed upon them. And their hearts went hard. Their hearts became hard. وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And so many of them are evildoers, wrongdoers. 
So now you hear this, you say, but I don't become, I don't feel the softness in my heart. I don't tear when I hear the Quran. I'm listening to the Quran and I don't feel this Iman in myself. I don't feel this increase. Allah says, don't despair. My slave, don't despair. Why? I'lamu, know very well. I'lamu, know very well. Anna Allah yuhyil arda ba'da mawtiha. Look at the metaphor. Like the rain is falling and when the earth becomes hard and barren from a long summer day or long summer months and you're waiting for monsoon or for spring. So it's dry heat and harsh heat. The earth is hard and it's very rough, right? Very rough. It can't grow anything. Allah says, I'lamu anna Allah yuhyil arda ba'da mawtiha. Allah gives life to the earth after its death. Allah gives life to the earth after its death. In Surah Al-Rum, Allah says, فَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ آثَارِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ كَيْفَ يُحْيِي الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا Look at the mercy of Allah when it comes down. How Allah gives life to the earth, the dead earth after a prolonged period of death. It becomes lush, it becomes green. So man, worry not. Your life went by, your heart has become very hard. Your heart has become very hard. You are fearing, you are saying, I don't, can't even cry, can't bring tears to my eyes. Allah says, man, don't despair. That Allah who can bring water from the sky and soften a very hard and a very rough soil and land, that Allah is equally capable that when this Quran enters your ears and it penetrates your heart, Allah can soften your heart and change your life. This was the same Quran when Ibn, Ibn al-Khattab, when he heard it, إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدْنِي when you heard the verse of the Quran, indeed I am Allah, don't worship anyone other than me. Heart shook, heart trembled, life changed. Life changed. So inshallah, this is what we're doing. You know, the physical earth is also being softened and we are hearing these verses. Allah let the nur and the light of this verse enter our hearts inshallah. I mean, Allah let the light of these verses enter our hearts. And let the beauty of these uh, verses sink into our hearts and let, us, let it be a manifestation in our lives. Like Aisha radiallahu anha when asked about the character of the Prophet ﷺ. she said, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ The character of the Prophet ﷺ was the Qur'an. So this is your physical Qur'an you recite. And then there's the Prophet ﷺ, the walking, talking Qur'an. His life is just a manifestation of the Qur'an. So don't put anything before Allah. Allah and His Rasul come before everything. My ideology, my mind, my brain tells me this philosophy is correct, this method, this ideology is correct. But this is what Allah and His Rasul have said. This is what Allah and His Rasul want, done, I will not question. I will not question beyond the authority of Allah, beyond the dictate of Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti nabi, wa la tajharu lahu bil qawl. Now the etiquettes of the verse are now being mentioned. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti nabi. Do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa la tajharu lahu bil qawl. And do not speak in a very loud voice. Kajahri ba'dikum li ba'din. Like how you speak to one another. You speak to each other with a very loud voice, with a very abrupt voice, in an abrupt manner. Don't speak like that to the Prophet. It could very be it could be very possible that you do this, you are oblivious, your a'mal, your good deeds are discarded in the courts of Allah and you don't even know. You make a mistake, you do something wrong, you don't even realize the wrong you are doing. And there's habit to your a'mal. There is destruction to your a'mal you can't even realize. And it's something very serious. In the Qistas al Mustaqeen Abu Hamid al Ghazali, rahimahullah, Imam Ghazali, a very great theologian and a great thinker in Islam, one of the champions, intellectual champions of our history. Right? Just recently, I was looking at a professor from Yale who just, com just recently completed a dissertation in the theological and philosophical impact Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah ha has had. So he writes, he says an amazing thing and I mention it here as a lesson for one and all. He says, فَأَقُولُ لِلْعَامِ He says, he's speaking about a, uh, a, a chain of events and things that are from the problems of our society and where people misuse or have 
flawed logic and ration. Thereafter, he says, addressing the layman, I say to the layman, the man who has not been trained in the sciences and the prerequisites of the religion, the one who does not have the correct tools to speak in terms of the academics of this religion. I say to the layman, to dive into the difference of opinion of the scholars is not from your cup of tea. Is not your cup of tea. Right? The ulama mentioned there are certain things in which we are quiet. Certain differences which we are quiet. One, the difference in your parents. Your mother, your father, there's differences. In that you should stay quiet. Another is the difference of opinion between the Sahaba. Mushajaratu Sahaba, this is a famous thing where the difference of opinion between Sahaba, and we'll see over here, you know, the beauty of it, even though they, in opinion, were, had differed, but their hearts were united. To such an extent that I personally would say that their hearts were more united in difference of opinion than our hearts are united in uni unity. And we'll draw lessons from their lives to understand this truly. So he says, لَيْسَ الْخَوْضُ فِي الْإِخْتِلَافَاتِ مِنْ عِلْمِكَ And the third is the difference of opinion of scholars. So he says, to dive into the difference of opinion of the scholars is not your job. We have big issues happening about the moon, right? It's because people who are not trained are involving in scholarly discussion. Things they shouldn't be taking. Let the ulama deal with it. But Shaykh, you know the Quran, it's been revealed for all people. Why can't I just take it? Allah says, you know, Allah says, indeed we made the Quran easy for remembrance. Yeah, Allah says, لِذِّكْر, for remembrance. Allah didn't say, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْإِسْتِنْبَاطِ We made the Quran easy to derive rulings. No, we made the Quran easy. If you want to learn a lesson, if you want to uh, make, you know, to develop, spirit, to have spiritual re reformation through the Quran, Allah has put that. To learn etiquette, conduct, to soften your, all of that you can do. But to academically draw, this is not your job. You need to be trained in the prerequisites. لَيْسَ الْخَوْضُ فِي الْإِخْتِلَافَاتِ مِنْ عِلْمِكَ Abu Ghaz, uh, Imam Ghazali says that to go into the difference of opinion of scholars, layman, O oh man, who is not a scholar, it's not your job. It's not your job. فَحْضُرْ فَإِيَّاكَ ثُمَّ إِيَّاكَ أَن تَهْلِكَ نَفْسَكَ Once again, be cautious, protect yourself, refrain from destroying yourself. فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا صَرَفْتَ عُمْرَكَ فِي صَنَاعَةِ الصِّيَاغَةِ لَمْ تَكُنْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْحِيَاكَةِ وَأَنْتَ صَرَفْتَ عُمْرَكَ فِي غَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ فَكَيْفَ تَكُونُ أَهْلًا لِلْخَوْضِ فِيهِ He says if you, by example, by analogy, if you spent your life in something other than the sacred sciences of this religion, the sacred knowledge of this religion, if you have spent your life as a weaver, you know, tailoring clothing as a weaver, you know, in one night you cannot just become a goldsmith. If you spent your life doing one occupation, you can't just overnight say, now I'm going to do this. If your whole life you were a builder, you were an architect, tomorrow, okay, mashallah, I'm going to open my own doctor's clinic. And I feel like being a doctor. You can't just do that. So if you spent your entire life as a weaver, he is giving examples, you know, prevalent in his time. I give examples prevalent in our time. If you're a businessman, you're going to wake up tomorrow, you're going to say, now tomorrow, from tomorrow, I want to start prescribing medicine. I'll become a pharmacist or vice versa. My whole life I've spent in a lab, you know, as a pharmacist. And from tomorrow I want to start, you know, designing buildings, right? So if you spent your entire life as a weaver, overnight you can become a goldsmith. Imam Ghazali says, and you spent your life, your entire life in everything other than Islamic knowledge. So who gave you the right to dive in and to speak about the differences of the scholars? وَأَنْتَ صَرَفْتَ عُمْرَكَ فِي غَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ فَكَيْفَ تَكُونُ أَهْلًا لِلْخَوْضِ فِيهِ And then again says, فَحْضُرْ وَإِيَّاكَ أَن تَهْلِكَ نَفْسَكَ Again, my friend, protect yourself from destruction. How? Why? He says, فَكُلُّ كَبِيرَةٍ تَجْرِي عَلَى الْعَامِي أَهْوَنُ مِنْ أَنْ يَخُوضَ فِي الْعِلْمِ فَيَكْفُرَ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَدْرِي Over here, he was talking about, do not speak to the Prophet like you speak to one another, loud, abrupt, disrespectfully. Why? You may be doing something disrespectful, you know, lack of etiquette. Your a'mal may be disregarded in the courts of Allah, rejected in the courts of Allah, you don't even know. Habat, your a'mal don't count for nothing. 
So he says that فَكُلُّ كَبِيرَةٍ تَجْرِي عَلَى الْعَامِ Listen to me carefully and let this message go far and wide. فَكُلُّ كَبِيرَةٍ تَجْرِي عَلَى الْعَامِ It is possible for a layman. The, the verbatim words of Imam Al-Ghazali, you can check in his book, Qistas Al-Mustaqim, he mentions this. He says, for a layman to perpetrate every major sin. فَكُلُّ كَبِيرَةٍ تَجْرِي عَلَى الْعَامِ It is possible for a layman to indulge and perpetrate every major sin. Sin that steal, you know, fornicate, every major sin. أَهْوَنُ مِنْ أَنْ يَخُوضَ فِي الْعِلْمِ فَيَكْفُرَ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَدْرِي لا يدري. Rather than he utters something in the difference of opinion, in the difference of opinion of these scholars, he says something due to his ignorance, not realizing he has erred something very grave and very great, which has caused him to slip out of the parameters of Islam. He doesn't even know he has uttered words of kufr due to his ignorance, and all of his amal are null and void. So you can do every sin and wrong, and you can ask for tawbah. Rather than you speak about the difference of opinion of scholars, you don't know how to harness your tongue. You are not adequate in this knowledge, in the sciences, in the training. You say something you shouldn't be saying. And you may have slipped, slipped out of the folds of Islam. Like Ibn, Ibn uh, Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu would say after a lengthy hadith of Qudsi, in which a person said something that Allah is not going to forgive you. And Allah says, who is swearing by me without any authority? And then Allah, you know, rejected all of his uh, deeds and put this person in the fire. And then accepted the fasik. He said, I forgive all of your sins and put him into the heaven. And then Abu Hurair would say, Wallahi, la takallamat bi kalimatin awbaqat bihi dunyahu wa akhiratu. This man uttered a word oblivious, ignorant, one word, one word he said, by which his dunya, his akhirat, both were destroyed. One word you said, in a joke, right? You made it a joke. The difference of opinion of scholars, you made it a joke. You made it a joke. They're very grave. It's a very, we think it's a joke and we joke about it. But there also needs to be a balance inside our jokes. There need to be parameters inside our jokes. Islam says joke, absolutely. But there are guidelines and parameters. There are guidelines and parameters. So harnessing of the tongue is very important. And that's what this surah basically indicates to. Don't speak to the Prophet ﷺ with a loud voice, abrupt demeanor. As you speak to one another, you don't know your a'mal could be rejected in the courts of Allah. You don't even realize. So inshallah, we will stop here from the following week. We will dive into the, the, the reason for the revelation of these verses of this surah. Why the surah was named Surah Al-Hujarat. Uh, the difference that came along and the benefits we have. The etiquettes and the morals that are driven from the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these gathering of ours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly make these a means of our salvation on the day of judgment. Let the nur of this, these verses penetrate our hearts. Allah put the nur of these verses in our eyes. Put the nur of these verses in our faces. Because truly everything, ad dunya mal'oon wa mal'oon ma fiha. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this dunya, is, uh, you know, this dunya is cursed and it's cursed to whatever is in this dunya. إِلَّا عَالِمًا أَوْ مُتَعَلِّمًا Except for the one who teaches, except for the one who learns. This learning, teaching, sitting together, truly for the pleasure of Allah.